Despite being nerfed following the release of Grounded 1.0, the Coupe de Grasse mutation is still one of the best mutations in the game. It slightly increases your chances to land a critical hit both in combat and while harvesting resources like pebbles and grass. Which means it may take less swings to defeat the next enemy or to collect the next resource which will save you durability on your tools. In combat, critical hits can be even more advantageous because not only will they deal extra damage, but they will also cause your opponent to stagger and can interrupt enemy attack animations, giving you more opportunities to inflict damage. There's two tiers to this mutation and both are unlocked in specific locations around the yard. One tier is unlocked by discovering the Four Leaf Clover landmark which can be found by swimming through a submerged tunnel along the shoreline of the eastern flooded region. As you can see by the map, the entrance to this tunnel is located due east of the board protruding from the ground in the lower grasslands, commonly referred to by many grounded gamers as Plank Cliff. The tunnel is not very long, so diving gear will not be required. However, the tunnel is extremely dark, so you might want to consider bringing a slime mold torch or lantern. At the end of the tunnel, you'll find the four leaf clover and unlock one tier of Coupe de Grasse. The other tier is unlocked by interacting with the 20-sided dice that can be found at the end of the Minotaur's maze on top of the picnic table. To reach the top, you'll need to use a Brat Burst Bomb to knock over the leaning shovel that can be found at the south side of the table. This will create a ramp allowing you to reach the top of the bench that's connected to the table's south side. Make your way to the far end of this bench and use the table's crossbeam in the back to reach the other bench. Once here, you'll need to climb the Minotaurs and Myrmidons book cover to reach the handle of the cooler, which can be struck with a tier 2 hammer, to create another ramp that leads onto the top of the table. When you get to the top of the table, the maze is found in the center, and you can make your way to the end by turning left, then right, and then right again into the partially open door. Following this hallway will lead you to the dice, and here's a shot of the map so you can see exactly where it is in case you're having trouble with the directions. Using a powerful weapon, you need to roll the dice so that the number 20 is facing up. Not all weapons and tools are capable of rolling the dice, but if you've been following my guides and gotten the pinch whacker, it will be good enough to do the job. And if you don't have the pinch whacker yet, then there's a video linked down in the description that you might want to check out. Because if you're a fan of grounded themed, grounded related content presented in tutorial format, then you've come to the right channel because that's basically all that I do here. And if that interests you, then defeat the like button with a critical strike. And I hope that this video earned your subscription today. And finally, once you roll the dice so that the number 20 is facing up, it will erupt with star effects and you'll have unlocked the next tier of Coupe de Grasse. What up? It's me, Tiny Pirate Gaming, and if you're still here, then, well, honestly, I don't, I don't know what you're still doing here. I, I basically covered everything related to the topic. I mean, there's not, there's not really much more I can say about it at this point. I don't think. Hmm. So what do I do? Um. Um. 
You can also follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for channel news, and join the Tiny Pirate Gaming Discord for discussions on grounded gaming, content creation, and more along with me and the rest of the hashtag Tiny Crew. So whether I see you here in the comments, over on the Twitch sphere, or someplace else across the streamiverse, just know that I appreciate all of your support and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Arg matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here. Do you really think that's gonna work? Well I know I know we gotta do something, but I mean, are you sure we're just gonna you just wanna tag these on there? You just wanna tag on the parody compilation? Just slap it on there to pad out the runtime? I mean, all right. I mean, you're the editor. Do it. Just throw it on there, then. Throw it on there. Whatever. I'm walking away. I'm walking away. It's the last video of the year. I'm done. I'm walking away. It's the last video of the, day, of the year. I'm walking away. It's up to you now, Sparkle. Edit it. I don't care what you do. The following is a hashtag's not sponsored as parody infomercial. Bill Swift's and Flex Seals does not endorse his Tiny Pirate Gamings as a spokesperson for Flex Seals. In fact, we're pretty sure they have no idea who he is. Because, because nobody knows who he is. Who is this bum? What up? It's Tiny Pirate Gaming. You might remember me from grounded themed, grounded related tutorials such as 10 Tips and Tricks, Grounded Update 9.1. Or Hedge Lab Find Jungle Temple Burgle Chip Unlock Zip Lines. But today, we're talking about the Flex Seal family of products. It's liquid rubber in a can. Well, you know, you've got the tape, and then you've also got this here's the paints, and then there's also, you know, the really good one, you got the sprays right here. Did you get all that? And just to show the awesome, amazing adhesive power of Flex Seal. I sawed two big bins in half and made them into one really big bin using nothing but the Flex Seal family of products. It's liquid rubber in a can! Now that's a lot of damage! Well, I actually did it twice because I'm using these as new indoor habitats for my turtles, King Bowser, and Baby Bowser Jr. These are their old bins. They're not too big. And there's a big turtle and a baby turtle. And these are their new bins, much bigger. And they have a watertight seal thanks to the awesome adhesive power of liquid rubber in a can, or spray bottle, or in tape format. And they need that watertight seal to hold in all this soil and turtle bedding. I even made special crossbeam supports for the lights, but but I, I didn't use any flex seal for that. Then I set up their decorations and BAM! New turtle bins for King Bowser and the baby. I even did the thing with the water and the tape and you slap it on after the stab in the bottle and the water sprays out just like on the TV. No, that's a lot of damage. And Flex Seal tape really works great. It's liquid rubber in tape format. This works wet or dry. Overall, I give the paint a C-class ranking because it is effective, but it's sloppy and it's hard to control and it sort of gets all over the place. I rank the spray at an A-class because it is less sloppy than the paint, but requires excessive additional coats and long drying times between applications. And the tape is S-class because it's strong, controllable, and durable enough to stick and hold together almost anything. Like seriously, this stuff is sticky, so be careful when using it. And that's a turtle tutorial and a flex seal review that has nothing to do with Grounded. But if you're a fan of Grounded themed, Grounded related content presented in tutorial format then you've found the right channel because that's basically all that I do here and if you enjoy that then you could do me a huge favor by defeating the like button with a serious serious killer move and I hope that this video earns your subscription today. You can also follow me on Twitch for live streams, Twitter for channel news, or discuss grounded gaming content creation and more along with me and the rest of the hashtag tiny crew by joining the tiny pirate gaming discord. So whether I see you here in the comments, over on the Twitch sphere, or someplace else across the streamiverse, just know that I really appreciate all of your support and thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Arg matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here. <laughs>